So we have a wet roof today, so I won't be going up there to finish the flashing. Uh, instead, I'm gonna work on the sockets. Uh, as with everything, there's just a lot to learn. Uh, I've decided that we're gonna use a, a J-channel uh, underneath the jacks there on the wall, and uh, we'll slide the soffits into that. I will pin them to the fascia board um, just temporarily as I walk across. That pin will be covered up uh, by the actual fascia trim itself which again, I'm hoping to screw uh, underneath um, to keep it pretty clean looking. At least that's the plan. For the corner detail here, uh, I was struggling whether to try to do a box stand or what the heck to do. So eventually I decided that I'll do a 45. I think it'll look really clean and nice. Uh, for that, I cut this little guy here to mount some trim onto that'll help bring those two 45s together. Complicated little guy, 45 angle there, two 45s here, but this one is on an 18.6 or a 412 pitch. It all fits quite nicely together, <laughs> right, right up there. So I'm gonna nail this guy in and that'll give me a surface to uh, secure the 45. It's our first piece of trim. So the 45 soffit, I will just tuck uh, tuck into there and I'll put another piece right, right here as well. I learned a couple lessons. Hammering upside down is terrible and deafening. So I won't be doing that again. I'm wondering if I should have uh, done the J channel there first, if that's gonna get in the way of the J channel. Maybe, maybe not. I can probably slide the J, J channel over it. We'll see. We just installed our first J channel up here under the soffit. And I'll show you what that looks like. So it's squeezed up there. We secured it with just two inch nails every 24 inches. Those nails will penetrate the sheathing and that's about it. I guess we could use a longer nail, but I don't think it's necessary. You know, we might hit wood behind it in some cases, but not generally. So we're gonna keep putting this up all the way across and then I'll start on that end and start sliding in the, uh, uh, the soffit panels. Robert started off blowing some leaves out of here. Uh, we finished the soffit under the eave here and uh, some of the panels are longer than others and they're hanging out um, over the fascia board more than we want. So he's going to grab the grinder and he'll uh, go along the edge here grinding off the bits that are offensively overhanging. The reason he raked is we have a magnetic sweeper that uh, we hope to bring over this area after the fact and grab uh, the shavings that, that fell. Uh, we're trying to keep a clean construction site. It's our home and we and our dog run around here. So uh, we don't want to, um, we don't want to litter and we don't want to endanger ourselves. So we'll, uh, we'll be cleaning it up after ourselves. Ha, <laughs> ha,
So all the soffits are installed and uh, cut back. I'm kind of surprised how inconsistent the uh, width of these from the wall to the eave, varying up to three quarter inch in some cases between the uh, shortest and the longest. I don't understand what manufacturing process has such dramatic error in it, but it's, it's certainly not, not helpful. Most of this had to be ground. The actual eave is 12 inches exactly, which is what this is supposed to be. But all in all, it's it's just surprising that it's uh, it's as error prone as it is. Um, of course, grinding these thin uh, metal panels just you know contorts them all the heck. It should be fine though. Once we tuck the fascia trim uh, up there, all that ugly should be uh, should be well hidden. Speaking of fascia trim, I've got most of it cut and I think I have an order of events for installing it. We'll install the trim on the eaves first. I have 36 feet of it or so pre-cut and pre-drilled. So uh, I drilled it 24 on center, not on center, 24 inches basically. And we'll use probably a two inch washer screw on that just in case you get any water that pulls over it. So I think, I think that's reasonable. I did a little trim on the edges here so that they'll set six inches overlap and we can caulk the heck out of that overlap. On the rakes, we have four inch trim. These guys are pretty straightforward. We just did some angle cut and then I did a 45 on the underside. I haven't done the two pieces for this little top chunk here. Uh, they'll go on last. So order of events is first the eave and the rake and then the top. Each will kind of fold over and protect the previous one. So I think we're ready to start the eave. Uh, we'll be starting on the far end so that our overlaps aren't visible at all. Beautiful wet snow, big chunky flakes, crunching underfoot. I wish this barn was dried in. <laughs> we put two courses up, expecting that to keep out most of the moisture. It certainly keeps out most of the rain. Uh, snow, yeah, not so much. The snow is making its way pretty much, pretty much everywhere. But this is good news. Despite the snow, I kind of knocked out all the rest of the trim on this rake. It looks really good. I don't know if you can tell between the large snowflakes, but I mean, it really turned out nicely. The screws don't look too obtrusive. Uh, everything on the front is nice and clean. Uh, the corner details are really tight. I'm very pleased with the corner details. You know, a nice little 45 there, a tight corner there, caulk in the hole. Yeah, it, it looks good. People advise not to screw down the gable trim there, but 
I don't know. That looks like it's enough for a, for a wasp to take residence, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. As of this moment, I'm considering this particular soffit done. Unfortunately, we still have to do the rake on the other side. Uh, yeah, so just have to do the rake here and the corner. So it's a total of eight screws and a little bit of caulk and this fascia piece will be done. We'll finish up that other side and we're gonna call it a day. We're supposed to get two inches, which is not much, but doesn't necessarily help our work. 